I'm Satine Phoenix, and this is Larry Hamilton, and you're watching us on Follow Me and Die. Welcome to Follow Me and Die. I'm your host, Larry Hamilton, and today in our series, Roll 20 for the Absolute Beginner, we'll focus on getting started for the player. As a player in a Roll 20 game, you'll receive a link to the game from the GM. If you are not currently signed into Roll 20 or you do not have an account yet, when you click the link, you'll see the screen that looks like the following. On the left, you'll see the opportunity to sign up for a Roll 20 account if you do not currently have one, and if you do have a Roll20 account, place where you enter your credentials to sign in. Once you've either created your account or signed in, you'll see the next screen. Now that you're signed in, you'll see the screen where the GM has perhaps given a picture to help set the mood for the game, the name of the campaign, and start times and other information. You'll see other players that may have already joined, and there'll be the big reddish pink button, Join Online. Clicking that will bring you into the game and add it to your list of games. Once you are signed into the game, your screen will look like the following. You will see your icon as a player in the lower left, and the top right in green will be helpful reminders about the basics of using the chat feature and rolling dice and communicating with other players. And if there are other players in the game, you'll see their icon as well, and perhaps any information they have entered in the chat. Now that we're signed in, let's take a look and see what we have. On the opening screen, down in the lower left-hand corner, tell the settings are chained, the icon associated with the player's Roll20 account will show as the player icon. Below that will be the name of the player. Until the player signs in and changes it to begin with, it will have the name of the player as associated with their Roll20 account. Change it for this particular game, you must go up to the gear in the top right hand corner called My Settings and you change the play name here. Some GMs want the person's real name, then the character name, or vice versa, and click Save Name to save the change. Change the size of the player avatar. You can change it to large, small, or names only. The benefit to names only is that you have more screen real estate for maps and drawings and character movement. It is possible if you wish to use the Roll20, if your GM wishes to use the Roll20 features for audio and visual, the camera for each player will show what the player chooses to show. Some players wish to show their camera feed, others will just show a default image. You'll have to consult with your GM to decide which settings they want. Most of the settings under My Settings, you'll need to verify with your GM what settings they want. So now back to the tabletop, you can see that there's two tokens on the board. This caveman token, no matter what I try, I can't click on it because I'm a player. That token has not been given to me to control. However, this token lets me click on it and we get activity. The reason for that is, as the GM, I gave myself as a player control of this character. So I can go under this character. I can change its name if I don't like it. I can specify what numbers show in each bar unless the GM has determined that previously for my character. Uh, if there's an aura, such as from carrying light or light spell or some spell with an aura. And those are the only things on that token I can change uh, that will affect the red, green, and blue circles. That again is by clicking the gear. If I click this circle button, that gives me different statuses, which to indicate that you're injured or uh, dead or slept or slowed. You can use the different icons for that or different colors to indicate different things that players and GMs will that mean. I find all too often that I do not have the selection tool selected when I want to interact my icon as a player. I also do that as a GM. If the select button is not highlighted on the token toolbar, you cannot interact with your tokens. However, if any other icon is active, you can't click on your token, just as if you're clicking on a token you don't control. In order to move a token you control, you have to click on this bar and you can grab and move your There's the art bar. You see I drew some little blue dots. I selected the paintbrush shapes, or well, rectangles. Control, left click for squares. Circles is alt, left click polygons, if you wish. 
and you can do part of your text to measure the distance. There's the dice roller, that's for the basic rolls. And it will track your last 10 rolls. Let's roll a d20 It'll pop up here and tell me that's the first of my last 10 rolls, and I can re-roll that. That's one of the methods to roll dice. Finally, there's the help, help and doc, main help pages of the wiki. Uh, that's very helpful. Is the shortcut reference if you can't remember a shortcut or want to learn the shortcuts. Lastly is the report a bug feature. Uh, you don't need to report a bug unless you're experiencing something that's definitely a bug. I recommend not report a bug and tell you verified uh, it is definitely a bug. No one else has reported it. Above the chat window of this green and welcome to roll 20 gives you a quick explanation of how to use the chat feature which includes typing messages, rolling dice, and the formula for rolling dice, a GM roll, which lets the player and the GM be the only one to see that roll. If a GM does a GM roll, only the GM will see it. W, slash W is a whisper, so you can whisper to the player. Next are the journal, is the journal tab. You can see the characters. I only see the character that has been assigned to me by the GM. If I click, I'll get the character sheet. See a bio and info. That starts off as blank. I can go in and I can edit, find an avatar or picture online, or draw it myself and uh, drag and drop it in there. I can type a bio, type in whatever you want to say about your character. Next, under attributes and abilities, because the GM did not specify a character sheet, nothing is defined. As a player, since we have control of this sheet, we can add attributes and abilities. We're not going to do that. We're going to assume that's the job of the GM to add those. Under attributes and abilities, this is where you'd have things such as your strength, dexterity, constitution, or other ability scores. They call attributes of all 20. Abilities are actions you can take. We're not going to define those as a player. We're going to leave that to the GM assign. Other types of journal entries would be handouts. So here we have a mysterious note the player can edit, signified by the edit button. The player can change the name, add a description, save the changes. Clicking the X removes it from the screen. Note that the GM has not given the players access to edit. They can only read it. So there's no option to edit. Could copy and paste what's in the note if we wished, but we can't do anything with it. A very handy thing uh, when you're on the journal tab and there are conversations and roles going on, you'll keep getting a beep and information in the chat off here. And you then have to go back and forth between the chat and the journal see if it was a role or other information that you can tell what it was. One helpful way to avoid that, open up your character sheet anywhere in this top portion. You double click, it'll shrink it. Then you can double click it to bring it back. That way you don't have to be on the journal tab to get at it. Now, if you would accidentally hit the X to close it, then you will have to go to the journal. You can do that with anything available to you as a player on the journal tab so that you then have it available to you. It'll be gray in the background, so uh, it can kind of blend in. The jukebox is not functional, so we won't cover that. The collection. Here, I am both the GM and a player under the same name. So this macro that I shared to all the players is available down here at the bottom. As a player, as a player, I can control whether or not I want to see the macro in the bar. If your GM has shared macros with you, you'll have to come to this tab and mark in bar for any of the macros the GM has shared with you so that you can use them down here. And again, the benefit of having them on the macro bar is that you don't have to keep coming to the collections tab to activate the macro. Again, there are decks that there's the default deck of standard playing cards. Your GM can define other decks, rollable tables, have rollable tables that players can roll against. Uh, an example of macros I have for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, a macro that will roll a character with a 
quick click rollable tables. A good example, I have a Metamorphosis Alpha campaign, and I have tables to roll against for different types of mutations. And you can have tables for anything. The GM can have tables that are only accessible to the GM for checking for random encounters or effects of potions, rolls, or devices. And as we touched on before, there's the settings. There's not a whole lot you need to worry about under here. Uh, you may see the option to enable 3D dice and automatically roll 3D dice. While those look cool and roll across the screen uh, looking like real dice, it eats up bandwidth and slows things down. So if you uh, turn off the video of your camera so that your name only for the display and you do not turn on the 3D dice, that gives you the fastest possible experience with Roll20. With both Roll20 and any other uh, software you may use to use with your experience, lowest connection is have a big impact. So if you have multiple players, player or GM, whoever has the slowest connection is going to have the biggest impact on how fast things happen in the game. The less things eating up that bandwidth, the better. Now, if you really want to see everybody's reactions face to face time, do that and individual player wants to see the 3D dice, they can do that. But once you have player established, you're ready for the beginning of the scenario of the campaign with your GM. I recommend that every GM have a session zero. Every player can create their character, talk about concepts or ideas they may have for their character. The GM can go over more details about make sure everything's set and go that the player has the right settings within the game for the GM's preference for running things. Once those are set, um, then that player would be ready for the first play session. The player can have their own macros, have a macro that uh, you use for certain actions. Macro can do about anything that you can type into the chat. Uh, that's more in depth than we're going to have time for. Quick video. I want to keep it short. Hopefully, that's answered the basics of started. Uh, there's a few other quick little things I want to touch on. Roll the size of the map. Roll up and down the map and side to side. The button with three lines on it hides the chat window. Click to bring it back. Also, on these, have this button with two little squares on it, click that, that makes it a separate window. You don't want to see the separate windows, close it back, anything that's a journal has that. On. So that should be the main points for a player new to Roll20. I'd like to uh, interact with you in the comments down below if you have any other questions or specific topics as a player you'd like to touch on. Please let me know. Going forward, I'll touch on other things specific to the GM or the player and continue to point out which things for the GM are also useful for the players. And if you have any tips you'd like to share, please cut them out in the comments and I'll mention them in a future video. Thank you and game on. Thank you for watching this installment of Roll20 for the Absolute Beginner. Please like and share and tell all your friends if you found this helpful. If you have topics for the beginner that you'd like to touch on in future videos, please comment below. And if you have any tips for beginners that you'd like to share, mention them in the comments and I'll bring them up in a future video. My next video in the series will be creating basic character sheets, specifically for those game systems in Roll20 that don't have pre-built character sheets. You can follow me online on my blog, Follow Me and Die, on G+, Twitter, and Facebook. I also have a Cafe Press store where you can buy t-shirts and hoodies with the Follow Me and Die logo by Satine Phoenix. If you'd like to get more advanced topics about Roll20, check out Cody Lewis' channel Taking 20 in his Roll20 Master Series. And just remember, with all of my sites, you don't have a choice because it's Follow Me and Die! Series YouTube for the, but there's mighty.